Hello, I'm Claire Sherman, one of the readers in the McGull and Melling team of Church of England Churches. I'm delighted to welcome you to our worship today and I hope that wherever and whenever you're joining in with this service that you'll be enabled to meet with God through the words, hymns, readings and talk and that you'll be strengthened for the week ahead. In our epistle reading, St Paul tells the Corinthians that however unworthy his previous life has been, he's been given the grace to teach others. What he teaches has been handed down from the apostles and others who knew Jesus and witnessed his resurrection. And this is the source of our belief. In the Gospel, we read of Jesus' calling of Simon, James and John. Having fished all night without success, the disciples respond to Jesus' invitation to put out into deep water and are rewarded with an enormous catch of fish. Assuring them they have nothing to fear, Jesus gives them their mission as fishers of people. Don't forget, if arising from your worship today, a verse of scripture, the line of a hymn or a thought really strikes a chord with you, as something that would be beneficial for the ministry team to receive, to help us as we discern God's way forward for us, as the churches in Magull and Melling, then please do get in touch and tell us about it via the m and email. So let's begin with a few moments of quiet in which we can look back over recent days. Let's call to mind and rejoice in the good things that have happened. And let's bring to mind the things we might well prefer to forget, the things that weigh on our conscience. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sins and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy upon us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew in us a right spirit and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect prayer for today, which is the fourth Sunday before Lent. Lord of the hosts of heaven, our salvation and our strength, Without you, we are lost. Guard us from all that harms or hurts and raise us when we fall through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading verses 1 to 11. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. 
For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's second reading is Luke 5, verses 1 to 11. Jesus calls his first disciples. One day, Jesus was standing on the shores of Lake Gennesaret when the people pushed their way to him to listen to the word of God. He saw two boats pulled up on the beach. The fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Jesus got into the one of the boats belonging to Simon and asked him to push a little way off from the shore. 
Jesus sat in the boat and taught the crowd. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, push the boat out further into the deep water and you and your partners let down your nets for a catch. Master, Simon answered, we've worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I will let down the nets. They let them down and caught such a large number of fish that the nets were about to break. So they motioned to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats full of fish that the boats were about to sink. When Simon Peter saw what had happened, he fell on his knees before Jesus and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. He and the others with him were all amazed at the large number of fish they had caught. The same was true for Simon's partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. They pulled the boats upon the beach, left everything and followed Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, it's nice to be with you again. Has anyone here ever been fishing? What kind of fishing? With a rod and line, a net? And where? Pond, river, out at sea? For a long time, fishing was, was the most popular sport in his country. Now, it only just scrapes into the top 20 most popular sports. But that still means there are three million anglers in England and Wales. And that excludes all the young children who take their nets down to the local pond or stream. I have happy memories of fishing for sticklebacks in local ponds and less happy memories of losing my footing and falling in. Fish have been around for about 450 million years, so they were here long before the dinosaurs. There are 25,000 types of fish, which is more than all the other creatures put together. Did you know that goldfish have teeth? That whales have belly buttons? That koi carp can live for up to 200 years? The oldest live for 226 years. There's a jellyfish that can go back in time. When it's really threatened, it turns itself into a load of baby jellyfish and they all start life again. Fish are amazing. Our Bible reading this morning was about the first disciples of Jesus, and they were fishermen. The reason that Jesus got involved with them was that he was talking to a large crowd on the shore of the Lake of Gennesaret, also known as Lake Gal Galilee. The crowd grew so large that Jesus was finding it hard to make himself heard. But he knew that he could be heard better by t getting into a boat. This was because the lake has lots of inlets with sloping banks that create a natural theatre. So, by going out a little in a boat, you can be heard much better than if you stay on the shore. After speaking to the crowd, Jesus spoke to Simon, one of the fishermen, and told him and his friends to go offshore and put out the fishing nets. The fishermen were already exhausted, having fished all night and caught nothing. It is well known even today that fish are more likely to be caught at night in that lake. So what chance was there as cat of catching fish during the day when the night had been a total write-off? But they did what Jesus told them. I guess they knew of his growing reputation and perhaps they were already friends of his. Anyway, they obeyed him with amazing results. Now I don't know about you, but I don't like taking instructions from anyone. I like to work things out for myself and trust my own judgment. I'm sure many of you are just the same. When I was at school, we loved to break the rules when we could. Not because there was a good reason to break them, but just to show each other that we could get away with things. However, there were some teachers that we really liked and respected. And we'd be really upset if we did anything to make them cross or disappointed with us. They had a natural sense of authority and goodness that made us trust them 
and want to obey and please them. This was how the fishermen regarded Jesus. As a result of obeying him, despite being really tired and fed up, they ended up with a massive haul of fish. Their trust in him was rewarded in the best way possible for fishermen. What they did then was really scary for those watching from the shore and for us hearing the lesson that we heard. Scary because Jesus asked the fishermen to give up their jobs and follow him. And they did so immediately. Can you imagine what that must be like? Someone you know meets you socially or at work and tells you to walk away from your life and follow him. I can't think of any circumstances where I would say yes to that invitation. And I bet you wouldn't say yes either. Just think about it. The fishermen owned their boats and nets. They made a pretty good living from fishing in the lake. They had families back home that depended on them. And yet, they were prepared to give up their incomes and spend much of the time wandering away from home with this Jesus. This is even more amazing when you think that Simon's first reaction was to feel really bad and inadequate in the presence of Jesus. But... Despite Simon's feelings about himself, which I guess were shared by the other fishermen, Jesus saw the potential in them and chose them to be his first and greatest disciples. Well, that's a lovely story, but what does it mean for us? We are here this morning because we have not been called away somewhere else to live a very different life. But can we be followers of Jesus where we are, here in McGill or Melling, or elsewhere if you're watching from a distance? Like the first disciples, we may think we are weak, selfish and we'll be ignored by others if we speak out about Jesus. But being a follower of, of Jesus is not about being strong, saintly and popular. It is simply about being willing to say yes After that, he will lead and inspire us to do and say things we never dreamt we could. In that sense, every Christian has put their old life behind them. By simply saying yes to Jesus where you are, you are becoming a new person and starting to lead a new life. You're turning into the person you were born to be. And that is the most joyful and fulfilling experience you can have. Thinking back to the disciples' original jobs, I think all of us are fishers in some way. We try to catch friends, to catch compliments from others, to catch money to live on, to catch love from our families and friends. And catching and sharing love is the main thing in life. As Christians, we know that God is love and all love comes from God. And so, just as the fishermen caught a vast amount of fish by trusting and following Jesus, so we can catch an amazing amount of love, friendship and happiness if we trust and follow Jesus. And in doing so, we bring others into our circle of love. We all have a choice between the meaningful life that comes from saying yes to Jesus and the self-focused life that comes from saying no to him and then trying to get happiness and success through our own efforts. I hope everyone watching this has made, or will make, the best choice by saying yes. But it's up to you. I hope you have chosen, and will choose, well. Amen. Holy God, of all power and saving grace, we bring before you our prayers of intercession. We pray for all those feeling out of their depth at this time, all who are fearful and swimming against the tide of oppression. We bring before you those caught up in the ever-rising tensions between Russia and Ukraine. We ask that you place your hand on the volatile situation and bring about peace and harmony. Holy God of all power and saving grace, 
may those desiring power over others bow to your surpassing power and might. Diffuse the situation, we pray. We pray for the people of Afghanistan. The family is struggling to cope and find money for food. The girls no longer being educated. The women no longer able to work freely. We pray for all hopes and dreams squashed by those yielding power. Holy God of all power and saving grace, sustain them. Bring justice to all suffering at the hands of others. We pray for all in this country, for all in our local communities as we attempt to return to some kind of normality after the COVID restrictions while still praying for all the issues because of COVID, the ongoing issues. We pray for the lonely, those still anxious about mixing with others. We pray for the jobless, all who have health struggles at this time, the recently bereaved, those struggling with ongoing grief, and those remembering anniversaries of loved ones gone before at this time. Holy God of all power and saving grace, bring healing, peace and comfort. Bring blessings in abundance. We pray for all who are in leadership, in parliament, in our local councils and communities. For all clergy and leaders of churches across the world. And pray for strength and courage for all believers in sharing the gospel in whatever ways are possible. We pray for the weary, those feeling out of their depth, and those who are sinking beneath the heavy load of responsibility. Holy God, of all power and saving grace, lift them, imbibe them with your grace, renewing their strength and commitment. May all lead with transparency, integrity and compassion, following your truths. God of all power, we bring before you Her Majesty the Queen, who on this day, 70 years ago in Kenya, heard the news of the death of her father, King George VI. This day marks 70 years of her accession to the throne, 70 years in which she has endured the ups and downs, joys and sorrows of life's story, personal and public. Yet she remains steadfast in her faith. We pray strength and good health for our Queen. Holy God of all power and saving grace, may your truths uphold her majesty throughout her reign. Holy God of all power and saving grace, may we all feel your sustaining hand helping us through whatever lies ahead. Lead us as we are caught up in your story and tread the path laid out for us. Amen. We join our prayers together by praying as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Saviour's blood Died he for
history all the immortal dies who can explore his strange design in vain the first born seraph tries to sound the depths of love divine tis mercy And so our time of worship comes to a close. Can I encourage us all to pray that as we listen out for and hear Jesus' call for our own unique mission, we will have the courage to put aside our fears of unworthiness. Can we ask the Lord for the grace we need to place all our faith and trust in him and for the generosity to play our part in building his kingdom here on earth. So we close with some words of blessing. 
May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us and all who we love, always. Amen.